babies, right? Yeah, we was babies. Yeah. We, he was like, when I met him, he was he, he 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 had this song called Backstabber, so he played it, and I was like, yo, it's dope, but I can't really understand what you're saying. Like, if we slowed it down, it'll be, and then we did another version of that song was Backstabber too. Mm-hmm. And then we did Infinite. So it was like people actually heard him because he was a Tretch fan. So it was boop, 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 zip, 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 zip. And I was too, because I thought, but I was like, that's trash. But you are saying a whole bunch. It's loaded. It was like really loaded, what he was saying. Because when he was rapping fast, I still could understand. I was listening to it like, wait a minute, you're not just rapping fast. Because at the time, people would do it just to do it. Right. And it was very rare for people to be able to do it like trash. Like he was saying stuff while he was doing it. Just like yeah. Twister. Twister don't just rap fast or Buster. Like it's a skill. Tech nine, it's a skill. And M was able to do it. And I was like, yo, if you slowed it down and people heard you. And the music that I gave him at the time was like really mood. It was like something that the things that you would hear today, a lot of jazz pianos, a lot of those things. But those are the only records that I had. So for records, I didn't have rock records in the house. I had, you know, what I so I was making beats with what I had. So he was real novice at it and all of us too. So he got better and I got better. And I then me and my dad was like, I was getting older and we was clashing and he was like, well, look, I said, I don't have a place to stay. And he was like, well, look, I'm going to let you take the room and make beats in the room and I'll sleep on the couch. And I thought that that was the craziest thing ever. And I was like, I get to get better. And he got better. And, and you know, I'm pretty sure I was a headache because I was younger than him. So I didn't even know how to keep a job. You know what I'm saying? So, but then we started working at this place and he took that job serious. Like it was like, I saw how serious he took things. What was, was the job? Uh, we worked at this place called Gilbert's Lodge. It was like mm-hmm. a, we was cooks. Uh-huh. Short order cooks. And, and, uh, and he, was and like he took, he, he took the job seriously. Oh <laughs> he yeah, he took, he took it seriously. He took it seriously. <laughs> yeah, he was like, he's the man at that shit. Like he's way mm-hmm. faster than I was on the grill. But, um, we started there and that's when I had that job. And I was like, I saw, I didn't have a lot of proof in him was like big brothers. Like, so, you know what I mean? And I was I was able to learn a lot of things that I I wasn't able to learn being with my and because I was so used to being with them all the time. Yeah. And when he left and went to California or whatever, and all of the stuff was happening, I was still in Michigan. Mm. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna get a house phone. So I got a house phone in the basement. I moved back with my parents. Um, I was a different person when I moved back. I was actually better at you know being a grown up, but I was always searching for something. Mm. Um, but he was out there and it was like he would call or I would call him and, you know, be able to hit him up and he would tell me the stories and I'd be like, man. And the one thing that I remember that I always wanted to do when he was telling me that stuff was I figured everybody was grabbing at him. And at that time, it was like, well, look, I'm going to be there. I'm going to get there and then I'm going to see you out there. It was never like, yo, bring me out because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm pretty sure that was already happening. And I remember I got the phone got cut off because I couldn't afford to keep it on. And then we didn't talk for a little bit. But the girlfriend I had at the time, she actually bought me my first drum machine. So I was like, now I'm like, all right, I'm about to turn all the way up on the beats. And so when he did come home, he would play me stuff that he was working on with Dre. And I just couldn't believe he was working with Dre. I was like, man, what? This is crazy. But then I was like, but yo, Dre working with you, that's a totally different sound for Dre. So at this time, I'm learning, too. So I was able to hear stuff before everybody else was able to hear it. So I was already influenced a little bit sonically. Yeah. So sonically, I was trying to, but not thinking to myself, not knowing how that even happened, Dre heard the music that I was making for him to even make him, you know what I mean? So I was like, and when I first met Dre, the first thing he said to me, I was scared to say something to him. And I forgot who introduced me to, I think it was Mark, my man, Mark LaBelle, I think. Mark LaBelle, or he was like, yo, Denon did just don't give a fuck. He did low down dirty. He was like, yo, that's my shit. Like, you're the reason we here. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I never thought of it like that. Yeah, man.